Hello, welcome back to the podcast. Today I am repurposing, resharing just a little clip from my mineral balancing course, I'm Balanced, because it's just too good not to share. And the course is going to be open again for enrollment very soon on the 11th of March. So I wanted to give you a little bit of a taster what to expect from the program. And when you sign up the first week, so from the 11th of March, that first week, this course is just going to be one payment of £347, which is an absolute steal. But then after that first week, the price will increase. So if you've heard me talk about minerals, which I do all the time, so wouldn't be a surprise. And you've been wanting a way to test your body and you're just curious, maybe you're struggling with digestive issues and issues with your mood and your hormones and you just can't figure it out, then this is a great foundational test to even just like rule out. And, but I've never seen a, a, a like a test that's okay with no imbalances. So I'm sure there's going to be something that you can work on. So this is going to be your chance to get a HTMA test, which is my favorite functional lab test. Plus, you're going to then have the tools and resources to understand your results, to be able to interpret the results and balance your minerals naturally. In this podcast episode, as I said, it's a clip from just one of the videos that are on the program um, library. And I'm sharing the importance of minerals for gut health specifically. So how mineral imbalances can increase the likelihood of pathogens overgrowing like parasites, bacterial overgrowth, yeast overgrowth, and it can contribute to leaky gut, it can contribute to low stomach acid. There are several different connections. Minerals are truly a foundational aspect of health that are commonly overlooked. So if you've been trying to heal your leaky gut, but you haven't looked at your minerals, then you're missing a huge piece of the puzzle. And it also works both ways too. So not only are minerals important for a healthy digestive tract and gut function, Whole gut health can also contribute to mineral deficiencies. It's a two-way street. There's a separate video for that in the course too, along with many, many others. I'm pretty sure it's around seven hours of content in total, and you can work through this at your own speed. So this is a completely do-it-yourself course. You're going to have this tool to use for, for life to be able to run this test for yourself one to two times a year, which is recommended or order extra tests for your loved ones. And additional tests at the moment are just £99. So this is a really great way to check in on your body. And I'm even telling clients of mine who have worked with one-on-one -on -one that this is this course is going to be amazing for them because they're then saving on paying for a session where they can literally understand it themselves. And there's so many questions that have been answered in that course. So I'm sure your personal question is going to be like fully understood and, and answered within the course content. So there's tons of you already inside the course from previous rounds that are already feeling so much better from this work. So this is your chance to get access to a functional lab test. And it's a hair sample, by the way, even if you're dealing with hair loss, if you can do the test and it's not a lot of hair in total, it's like a teaspoon's worth of hair from close to the scalp, that first inch and a half, this test can actually tell you why your hair is thinning and falling out and maybe it's dry and brittle in the first place. So I know it's annoying, but yeah, the results can be so good. You're also going to get expert recommendations from a practitioner, from myself, so that you can work on improving your energy, your brain function, your immune system, hormone imbalances. There's literally nothing that's not linked to mineral deficiencies in some way. Um, so it does need to be investigated. This test also looks at heavy metal toxicity, which is a big driver of chronic health issues these days, neurological issues, autoimmunity. And definitely if you've had a history of amalgam fillings or you've eaten a lot of fish in your life or you work uh, in a dentist office, like all of those places are higher risk factors for heavy metals. But most people have exposure to heavy metals from the soil, from the air quality, from water. But you just need to know exactly which ones you're your high in because they can have they can all contribute to fatigue and brain fog and mitochondrial issues but you need to know specifically which ones are out of whack for you same with the nutri the mineral deficiencies so i could have two people with fatigue and they could have completely different looking results so this is why everyone should test and instead of just taking general supplements and 
uh, immune support supplements and multivitamins when you don't really know what you're doing it can actually run into more issues and many of us get these general blanket statements from doctors or just people online telling us you need high dose vitamin d throughout the winter if you live in the northern hemisphere or you need to take high doses of zinc if you have acne or poor immune system but i've seen so many people run into worse problems from doing that because that's not actually what their body needed with those two examples there's so many other factors and potential causes that could be contributing to poor immune system not just a zinc deficiency so as i said i've never seen a normal test result so let's finally figure out for yourself what is going on and get yourself some more answers um, and i hope you enjoyed this podcast episode and if you like what you hear and you would love to test yourself for the first time or if you've done this test before and it's time for you to do a retest and check in on your progress or improvements then definitely check out i'm balanced when it opens again for enrollment i think this is going to be the third or fourth time and just a reminder it's the 11th of march so mark your diaries this is a completely do-it-yourself learn at your own speed type course so it's perfect if you're really busy or don't have time to commit to one-to-one or anything major at the moment and it is such a fraction of the price of my other programs my groups and my one-to-one you're going to have this information for life the link will be in the show notes to the website so you can learn a little bit more and then sign up if you're listening to this after or on the 11th of March and if you haven't already definitely sign up to my email list to stay up to date with any updates and new offers and you can do that really easily by downloading one of the free guides on my website which is vivanaturalhealth.co.uk but without any further ado let's get into the episode which is the clip from I'm Balanced. Okay so on to gut and immune health so I'm i chosen a few areas from each one that to really like talk a little bit more on and educate you on. So in terms of gut health, a really key issue that I see is low stomach acid. Signs of low stomach acid can be things like heartburn, acid reflux, excessive gas, stomach pains, weak and peeling nail- nails. So it, it may not even be anything digestive that you're experiencing. There can be throughout the body different signs that you might have an issue. And I experienced this one as well with the weak and peeling nails. Um, and for me, yeah, it was it was stomach acid that was causing it. Her loss, acne or rosacea, undigested food in the stool, other nutrient deficiencies or mineral imbalances. Um, a big one is iron, B12, uh, zinc. So if you've got chronically low levels of that, then you could be, the main issue could be low stomach acid production. Issues digesting your meat. Um, infections or overgrowth like SIBO, small intestine bacterial overgrowth, candida, which is yeast or parasites. So you might have a one-off issue with that, or you might have reoccurring problems. Like you just can't get rid of a yeast overgrowth or thrush every month or dandruff, fungal nail infections. Then that's a sign that you've got um, pretty stubborn candida. And a cause of that could be low stomach acid. And throughout this, if you've got questions, again, I can't see you all. So just unmute yourself or put a little um, chat message in if you can't talk. And I can read that out as we go through. Constipation, diarrhea, low appetite, nausea, and a heavy heavy feeling in the gut. So what are the causes of low stomach acid? So your stomach should be very acidic with a pH between one and two. So that's similar to to battery acid. If you were to get it on your hand, it would burn through to the bone. That's how it should be. Um, But it does get lower and more alkaline, so weaker as you age as well. So your enzyme production starts to lower just because you've got less energy in general. And it takes a lot of energy to make stomach acid in the first place. But some other causes maybe for those who are younger in their 20s, 30s, 40s, it could be due to an infection in the stomach. There's a bacterial infection that's really common called Helicobacter pylori, H. pylori. And I think around 50% of the population have this bacteria, but in a lot of them, they're not symptomatic. So it can be a harmonious bacteria. It can live within us. It doesn't really cause any problems. But when other factors happen, so let's say we're stressed or we have other parasites and stuff in the body, it can start to to overgrow or turn more of a negative strain of it. And this bacteria is a corkscrew shape. 
it burrows its way deep into the stomach lining and basically shuts off our stomach acid production, making it more alkaline, making it weaker. So instead of battery acid, our stomach acid's like apple cider vinegar. So no wonder we're getting this heavy feeling after eating, especially meat. Um, but then people blame the meat, saying that that's difficult to digest. But a healthy, strong gut should be able to break down something like a steak. Um, and with H. pylori, there's different treatment options. The typical recommendation is what's known as triple therapy. So that's two antibiotics plus a stomach acid blocker for about two weeks. And even the sound of that is like making my gut unhealthy um, because of yeah the impacts of antibiotics and all of that. But it, it does work. It can be effective. But I've got other remedies that I use. Um, so I use a product called Toxaprevent. And they have their own little five-day cleanse that's just as, if not more effective than the antibiotic treatment. And it's not got all of the negative side effects, killing off all your good and bad bacteria. Um, so that in involves some, I've got the name, it's like cliptonalate or something, a type of binder, like a clay or charcoal binder. You might be familiar with those. It's a different style and it makes the stomach a less ideal environment for H. pylori to grow in. So it's not like strongly killing anything off. It's just like changing the acids and enzymes and pH of the stomach so that H. pylori doesn't want to live there anymore. And the um, other product is a probiotic by the same company. And um, I get clients to do the, the cleanse for about five days and then use the rest of the probiotic. And a lot of the times it clears H. pylori. Um, or there's other protocols that use high doses of Saccharomyces boulardii and other probiotics, um, probiotics like Megaspore and some of the other ones from that line to clear H. pylori naturally. So it can be done um, if you've developed symptoms as a result of um, the H. pylori infection, like ulcers or um, like reflux and things, you can use other ingredients like aloe vera, um, marshmallow root, slippery elm to heal and soothe the gut lining. I thought I saw a chat message, um, but it's not coming through now for some reason. So you can try sending it again. I just got a notification for a second, then it, it disappeared. Or um, just unmute yourself, like I said earlier. Let me go back. There we go. Um, chronic stress is another one. Here we go. Oh, I'll just have to stop sharing in a second because it's not letting me view the chat box. So Claire asks, can you test specifically for H. pylori? Um, you can. There are tests that you can do through your doctor, but they're not 100% accurate because a lot of them just use a lab technician. They basically have someone looking under a microscope to see if they can see H. pylori. But because of human error, there's going to be a lot of cases that are missed with that, that detection. Whereas um, the tests that I use are PCR, so the DNA-based test. So um, a good company is Diagnostic Solutions Lab um, or um, the stool test as a general is called GI Map. And that one's really good. I've had clients for years have issues with some of those um, like weak and peeling nails, constant iron deficiency anemia and constant um, burning of acid reflux. They've tested negative tons of times through the doctor. We've finally done a, a really good DNA stool test and it's finally shown up on the, and that test is good because it shows different strains as well of H. pylori and um, it can make it, there's more virulent strains they're called. So it can become more harmful and it can be more linked to things like stomach ulcers and stomach cancer. So yeah, if you want to test, um, always try and go through the doctors first. And I feel bad saying it, but sometimes you need to play up your symptoms a little bit more to get a test like that. Because if you're going in and saying, I have acne, can you test me for H. pylori? Like there's no way they're going to do that. So if you go in and say, I've got like the classic symptoms, burning, reflux, um, heartburn, upper GI symptoms, pain, then they're more, much more likely to allow you a stool test doing that. And if it's a positive, it's a definite positive. Whereas if it's a negative, it doesn't necessarily rule really it out. Sorry, Vivian, just yep. another question on H. pylori. Um, if, because I did have it and then I did that, um, mm -hmm. drinking that clay stuff yeah. with you, but now my mum's been told she has it, so, like they think she yeah. has it. Um, is it just worth, instead of pay everyone in the family paying money to do the 
testing just for everyone yeah, to do the I'd say so so I always say like if you live in a household um, yeah. even if the person maybe not kids all the time because you don't want to be treating kids unnecessarily but definitely partners people who you're sharing cutlery and cuts with um then I'd I'd pretty much just test uh, treat everyone anyway unless someone has like major health issues and on a ton of medication then it would be a bit difficult for me to just recommend that to everyone um mm -hmm. but if you safely follow the instructions and everything um then it's not going to do any harm if they don't have h pylori because like i said it's not killing anything yeah. um it's just kind of if it if it's there it will help to clear it if it's not then it's just maybe 30 40 pounds wasted but that's better than 300 pounds for a stool test like a private stool test yeah so so do you think i've probably just got it again because i've been living with her and she's had it this potentially week. um but in terms of h pylori like if you're not symptomatic if you're if you're absolutely fine um then you don't necessarily need to treat it so i have some people um they just test on a yearly basis just to mm -hmm. keep healthy and they see that they have h pylori and they're not symptomatic I wouldn't necessarily treat those people, but mm. in your case, um, what can happen is sometimes you treat it, it goes, but if your defenses have stayed low, like if you haven't fixed the underlying zinc deficiency that can cause low stomach acid and you're, you've not fixed the underlying immune or gut imbalances, then the H. pylori can just hop back on board because the, the root of the, um, the reason that you got the infection hasn't cleared. Either you're still living with someone and you're getting high exposure but you can't be fearful for the rest of your life to pick it up again. Yeah. It's like with yeah. parasites, like we want to cleanse them um, and then reduce our risk factors. So if we go on holiday to India, we can take probiotics, we can take digestive enzymes, we can avoid dodgy looking foods. Um, we can do a yearly parasite cleanse. It's kind of like that with H. pylori. So should we do a yearly H. pylori cleanse or not necessarily? Um, I do. I, I recommend yearly cleansing yeah. in some way, um, typically yeah. like parasite stuff. Well, and yeah. Yeah, but even the parasite cleanse and some of the antimicrobials do have an impact against bacteria like H. pylori. It's not just okay. parasites, um, but maybe not a H. pylori cleanse unless someone's symptomatic. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so other causes of low stomach acid include mindless eating. So I've really emphasized the importance of mindful eating because that's one of the best things for stomach acid production. And you actually produce around 30% of your digestive enzymes before you even start eating, when you're cooking it, when you're smelling your food, when you're preparing and thinking about food. It's known as the cephalic phase. So a lot of your enzymes are actually produced then. Um, so make sure that you're going through that phase and not just um, getting off your laptop, like going to the fridge, shoving a sandwich in your mouth, and then just not having that, that whole restful experience or people going through drive throughs like no wonder the, they've got digestive issues. Um, and then certain medications can cause low stomach acid as well. Um, in an indirect way, things like the birth control pill because of the impacts that it has on zinc, um, but definitely things like stomach acid blockers, um, even over-the-counter stuff like Gaviscon. People just like take that on nights out now and um, think that it's normal to have Rennies and heartburn tablets in their bags. But um, that can be a vicious cycle because when you take those medications, you impact the absorption of minerals like zinc that you need to build stomach acid. So then it just keeps going round and round and people end up hooked on them. Um, and then nutrient deficiencies can contribute to low stomach acid as well, particularly zinc. So key minerals are underlined, zinc, sodium, and also vitamin B6 is important for stomach acid production. And then another thing in terms of gut health that's really important that most people uh, struggle with is issues with the gut barrier. So this is also known as leaky gut. I covered this on the gut health um, video. Zinc is a key nutrient to keep the, the called tight junctions in the gut stable, as is another mineral, sulfur. Um, so if you look back through your tests, check out zinc and all of the reasons that that could be lower in balance and same with sulfur. Um, and a healthy gut barrier is what helps us to protect helps to protect us against pathogens and conditions like autoimmune disease and food sensitivities. So in the gut, so the intestines, that's technically, so the gut is technically not inside our body until it passes the gut lining. And we can see all of the different things that can damage the gut lining, things like parasites and bacteria, medications and stress. And they breach this barrier, allowing undigested food, 
harmful bacteria to enter into the bloodstream, which creates a huge inflammatory cascade. And that is definitely how food allergies, immune system problems, and autoimmunity develop. And then finally, gut infections are another big one. And low magnesium and high calcium can be associated with this and or high calcium because that can slow the motility of your gut. And when your gut is slow, think of a stagnant pond versus a flowing river. Which one do you think is going to have the most infections in there? It's going to be the stagnant pond. So movement is, is life and that helps us to prevent buildup of bacteria um, because with a condition like SIBO, small intestine bacterial overgrowth, it can be an issue where the gut isn't cleaning itself regularly. Every minute, every 90 minutes after a meal, our gut has these cleansing waves that help to flush through bacteria and food from the body. But if you have, again, low mineral levels and thyroid issues, then that doesn't happen. And we can get a buildup of not necessarily bad bacteria with SIBO. It's just in the wrong location. Another driver of gut infections um, is excess iron and copper. So with copper, it's more of a dysregulation of copper. Copper is not necessarily bad, neither is iron, it's just when they're out of balance with other, one, other ones. That can drive infection and feed things like bacteria, fungus and parasites within the body. And then low potassium and or chromium can impact gut infections because of the impact that they have on blood sugar. And if your blood sugar is not controlled, then you're going to have more sugar around that feeds these bugs too. So you can see there's so many different connections. I probably could go on, but these are the top ones that I see in my practice. And top tips for gut health. These will all be um, in Kajabi after today um, with the presentation or the video to watch back. But my top tip for gut health, if you're struggling with gut health in terms of digestive symptoms or you just suspect based on what I've said that you might have some issues which will probably be all of you to be honest and um, you want to be doing these following things and I, I have to find things that are good for general recommendation there are all these extra things that can be done but these are the ones that pretty much everyone can benefit from so mindful eating there's a whole separate video on that and within that, I'd say um, the fluid timing is also a really big one. We've just been um, led to believe that it's totally normal to have a big glass of a drink at mealtime when it's actually not. And my my mum was actually talking about this the other day um, to my granddad. We were on about food for some reason. And she was saying that um, her great granddad, so his dad used to say, like, chew your food 32 times and when my granddad would ask for like a cup of tea he'd, he'd not let him have one at meal times because they just knew like that ancestral wisdom that it just wasn't good for your digestive health especially if you're consuming things like tea and coffee around meal times that can affect your um, mineral levels definitely so we want to separate them at least half an hour either side of meals i think a lot of people can benefit from digestive enzyme and spore-based probiotics they're listed in the supplement section Hi, um, you? yep Hi. Why does tea and coffee? So they've got um, tannins in there. It's a type of anti-nutrient yeah. um, and they can block mineral absorption. Ah, so never have tea or coffee with a meal. I wouldn't say never. Um, some people, um, so it's like black tea, so not herbal tea. So like caffeinated black tea, yeah. I'd say, is the, is the biggest one. Um, and coffee. Um, whereas people with, I have some clients with high iron, like hemochromatosis, I tell them to eat, um, to drink those things with the meal, especially if they're having something like um, red meat, they have to limit that as it is because they get high iron in the body. So I tell them if you're having a steak or something, have a cup of tea um, <laughs> with it to help, help block the iron. Whereas that's not going to work if someone's got chronic low iron. It's not going to be the only cause of like, extremely low iron but it's just something that they may be doing every single day as a habit so if you're going to have a coffee have it half an hour yep. before or half an yep. hour afterwards mm -hmm. probably okay. better after as well so if you're having it after at least you've got the food in your stomach then and it's going to be less um, stressful to the body and adrenals and everything um so definitely half an hour after yeah and that's how coffee used to be consumed as like a digestive bitter um after, especially in places like Italy, they have a little shot of espresso after a meal. It helps with digestion. They've got food in the stomach 
and they have it as like a dessert half an hour after the the meal nice thank you so digestive enzymes and swore based -based probiotics are good um if you have issues eliminating fully or you're constipated then uh, i'm not sure if they do them in the uk yet um i had a client ship one from the us but there's a brand called squatty potty or you can just make sure that your feet are elevated up a little bit standing on a little bin or a box or some books in your bathroom and just to put yourself in a more a more comfortable position to have a bowel movement because the modern day toilet is not um suitable like if you've ever looked at diagrams and stuff or other cultures how they go to the bathroom they're like squatted down and their knees are at an elevated angle and that's the perfect kind of structural way that we can eliminate fully so so many people are struggling with hemorrhoids and constipation and prolapses because they're straining so much um so just the the structural aspect um can make a huge difference vagus nerve exercises um can be really good for also nervous system stuff but things like gargling humming or um, depressing your tongue or literally like gagging yourself with your toothbrush this can all be done in a little bathroom routine morning evening but if you just spend an extra five minutes after brushing your teeth gargling with some mouthwash or water and just that muscle that you get when you put your toothbrush too far back that reflex that's strengthening your vagus nerve and all of those muscles in that area and you can even test it if you've got a really weak um, a really either overactive or non-existent gag reflex then that's a sign that your vagus nerve might be impacted and um, the vagus nerve is the one that connects the gut and the brain just as a reminder coffee enemas are one of my favorite tools and i will be recommending them (laughs) until the day that i die because they make a huge difference in my life and so many of my clients Um, if you're currently like really struggling with your health and you feel like you're um, quite sensitive or quite quote toxic um, with lots of heavy metals and stuff then definitely start slowly but they really helped me and I was quite sick at one point but um, yeah I can put like a guide for coffee enemas on the group as well if you want to try them out Um, but you want to make sure that you're taking a bind afterwards too that was a big, big mistake that I made for years I was doing enemas felt good but sometimes I felt like really bad afterwards and it's because you're very quickly releasing a lot of toxins into the system and if you've got nothing there to bind them up then they get recirculated unfortunately if they're a bit too invasive for you then castor oil packs can be um, more gentle and way more tolerated for sensitive people and there's kits online um, that you can get and again i'll link to those as well in the video Um, ginger tea is one of my favorite so when i was saying before about um tea around meal times ginger tea and, and herbal teas won't affect the mineral absorption uh, but i'd still separate them just to not impact stomach acid and enzymes but ginger tea can be very anti-inflammatory anti-spasmodic meaning that it helps with gas bloating cramps and pain um, and then raw carrot having a raw carrot every day can be really good for gut health and you'll see this pop up in the hormone section as well Um, because it helps with gut health to reduce any endotoxin which is bad bacteria in the gut so it has antibiotic like effects i really hope you enjoyed this episode if you did i would love for you to leave me a rating and review on your podcast app as this helps to support the show and it allows it to reach more people with this valuable information come and say hi over on instagram i'm at viva natural health And if you haven't already, check out my website, vivanaturalhealth.co.uk for tons more free resources and to discover how I could support you further. I currently offer one-on-one consultation packages if you want my top level support, then more affordable group programs and self-paced online courses. So there really is something for everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you back here next week for another episode.